queen is into design and she also is a triple threat. Her website next.cc brings an added dimension to art through design. There she has art, music, and media. Um, I am an architect and I'm also a professor of architecture and environmental design at the school here at the Art Institute of Chicago. I have a practice that works on green initiatives between Milwaukee and Chicago and with my partner uh, started out making animated films. And then as chair of this department bought the first computer to teach with. And that was all Oh, 20 years ago, even more. And uh, started the first computer lab with our visual communication, our AKA graphic design department. And ever since then, have between the filmmaking, the architecture, and the computers, have been fascinated about how digital technology can be incorporated in the classroom. Right. And what I find so fascinating is that when I started to talk to you about my triple threat, oh, you, right. said, you said, oh, wait a minute, uh, <laughs> because you have video, music, and everything up on your site, and you, you call it something different from your aspect, and I, I like fiction, I like to remember. Oh, so, yeah. I mean, it's really interesting. Well, my partner would like the triple threat, because <laughs> it's a sports analogy. Um, it's called digital fluency, and it comes out of uh, the UK, um, their organization, Future Lab, which was working with their schools and Microsoft to introduce technology in the classroom. And digital fluency means introduction to and access to a broad band of call, uh, media, media that is used in the culture. So it doesn't really talk about computers per se, it's using any type of technology that helps you create, communicate, and collaborate. I, I love it. I mean, that's great. <laughs> so it's down, if you look at the site, it says digital fluency, and click on it, and all the journeys that introduce any type of digital use of tools or uh, interactives will be included. Now, I notice all of your videos have music to it. Yes. And all your beauty videos are animated. Mm -hmm. And all of your videos even have, I want to say, words on Some it. narration as well. Yes, yes. yes, because as animators, when you do all those hand-drawn drawings, and then you um, photograph them, and then you put them in the film strip, the introduction of sound and text or voice and narration is critical to like creating a complete environment. And in architecture, we talk about creating complete environments that surround you as a person so that you have that experience, and the same is for film. So in 2000, we wrote an article about interactive environments and talking about the difference between film and architecture. So in film, we're sitting, watching the action. But in architecture, the architecture is by and large static, and we are actively moving through it. So those two things really fire all your synapses on your liver, because what it turns out. And so we were very excited about that connection. So ever since we began, this is the third rendition of the website, and that we want you to be able to look at something, to engage in it, but then have it take off and move on you. Uh -huh. Because you want possibilities, you mm -hmm. want to inspire people to do other things. And it's a huge portal, many windows opening to many other places in the world. And because you're really, this whole green initiative, mm -hmm. that's like the whole basis of it. That's why I find so fascinating. Well, and that's it, it's based because it's kind of balanced all the technology. Right, right. And that's what I find so fascinating mm -hmm. is that it's technology, but it's really the environment. Right. I don't want to say anti-tech, but it's like... It is, and it's funny, in beginning to introduce this to teachers and to um, camps, the educational camps who really teach outdoors didn't really have a lot of interest in it because it's technology. Yeah. And the technologists were like in a room like me right now that yeah. was windowless working on the computer. and. 
But actually that blend is essential and it's key for kids to learn. So when they do things on the computer, they know that they can take what they just experienced and learned and apply it out in the real world. Or they can go find something in the real world, come and scan it, manipulate it, and use it on the computer to do something new. So it has to be seamless. And I think another thing that was so drawn to is that you also believe that everything should be created by the person. Yes. It's student driven. Student driven, yeah. And I, that, I love that. And I think that comes from being a designer. And part of the initiative of creating this nonprofit was that design is not taught in most of our schools in our country, even though it's taught in Canada and the UK. And design is project-based learning. It's like, well, you let's build something. Let's yeah. do something and make something and test something. So it is, it totally fits into the whole STEM to STEAM yeah. discussion. And what it does is it helps the student um, stimulate a way to be curious and to find ways to learn about what they're interested in and then pursuing them. That whole personalized learning. Mm -hmm. I mean, really to find their purpose. Because if the education is not about our relationship with the environment, it is about creating that character and nurturing that purpose or that potential. Oh. <laughs> talk to you. And of course, I have to say, you should have seen us. We spent, I think we spent 45 minutes downstairs talking, talking, talking and another 45 minutes trying to get the right place to sit. Right, which we had to redesign in the school that I was designed because there's no sound room, sound room in this part of the school. And that's what I find so interesting <laughs> is that I'm at the Art Institute and you think, okay, it's mm -hmm. all about pictures and all that. And it is so noisy. <laughs> <laughs> because it's so much going on. And right. It's such a creative place to be. Yeah. And people are trying all kinds of different things all the time. So anyway, I know one of the things that we talked about that I found was really interesting is that with the computer and with access to digital tools, yes. so much of it is a steep learning curve, yes. particularly as the programs get deeper. And it became our concern early on that we didn't want the program to be the master of the student. And so to do that, the student has to be given the freedom to create their own projects and use the technology in new ways that we may not have even imagined. And that's what's happening with kids creating apps and um, making things on the computer and getting their parents who don't know how to use this excited about it. So, um, right. It's, it's, it's really a DIY thing. Right, right, do it yourself. Yeah. So it's, and that's the whole Well, then, like I said, I could, we're going to talk more. I, I just <laughs> love talking to you. It's just so that fun. But to find someone who comes from a different avenue, and it's like you're coming in from different doors, but we're mm -hmm. in the same center. It's just really. Well, you come from music, and music is considered the universal language. Yeah. You don't have to understand it to appreciate it or enjoy it. And in a funny counterpoint, I would like to say that architecture is a universal language right. because we all live in it. Yes. And so we all either take it for granted or appreciate it or really know what we like about it or don't. Right. And so I'm, we're trying to elevate that whole understanding that everything around us, people have created. and. Everyone in a K-12 classroom can be a creator and contribute to that. Um, well, thank you so much. Woo! <laughs> Thanks.